to Mike Jervik, who is Risk Management Consultant at Trusted Systems Consulting nowadays. Mike has worked his entire career in the Silicon Valley, where he now heads up his own information risk consulting practice. He's the current chair of the Open Group Security Forum, um, which sustains the Open Fair Industry Standard quantitative, quantitative Risk Analysis Body of Knowledge. Prior to that, Mike had 35 years of extensive experience, including developing and managing high technology products at Hewlett Packard, managing information security IT projects at Visa, and teaching college economics courses at San Jose State University. Uh, and leading risk analyses at clients such as the city and county of San Francisco. Uh, this morning, Mike's session is going to present the Open Group Security Forum standards and tools that help confront the risk and security issues associated with digital first architecture. So a warm welcome from the Open Group, a virtual welcome from the Open Group for Mike Jim. Over to you, sir. There, terrific, thank you. <clears throat> so, it's easy to it's obvious to everybody that a lot has changed uh, in the last in a very short time in just the last three months uh, locations have changed of where we're doing things platforms have changed to where we don't often know if maybe we're in kind of this emergency fast turnaround time working with individually owned devices or that used to be corporate owned uh, other technologies we may not know because we're really adapting on the fly and that adapting on the fly is occurring uh, you know across every industry segment whether it's education uh, uh, retail it, it it doesn't it doesn't really matter a lot is really changing really fast and a lot of relationships are moving on the fly where if we're you know, we had one supply chain, as we've been talking about, we may be trying to invent new ones very quickly in order to keep our businesses running. So boundaries and segmentation of functional responsibilities have been changing really rapidly. On the economic front, a lot has changed as well. The IMF World Economic Outlook for June 2020, in its article, A Crisis Like No Other, an uncertain recovery estimate is revised global output to decline by approximately 5% this year. And the estimate for 2021 is 6.5% lower than January of 2020's estimate. What this means is that this, uh, this change, this impact is a likely protracted one, one that's gonna take quite a bit of time and it's deep. And so people are in, you know, something of a survival mode and are making decisions that way during this time while a lot has changed. And in this chaotic environment, hostile actors are finding a really opportunity rich environment in order to capitalize on what for them is probably a once in a generation, if not longer, opportunity. But a lot hasn't changed either. So what stays the same? Well, companies in business still have the same liability to conduct their operations. They still have to comply with their regulatory mandates and they still have to manage and govern their operations in order to keep the business running, even in an uncertain time. That becomes their job, and management's job is, even in the face of uncertainty, higher risk, uh, they still have to forge ahead and achieve the objectives on behalf of their uh, constituents, of their, of their stakeholders. So what's happened, right? What's the digital security considerations in this environment? Well, it's increasingly important to connect governance, management, and operations in the right way, where the language is consistent so that we can communicate clearly and hopefully maybe once 
we need to have the right frame it, to do that. We have to have the, we have to frame our questions and our issues correctly, with the right objectives and key results, supported by good architecture and execution. One with that, what is the language and frame? Well, effective cyber risk management becomes the goal. Security architecture, deployment, and operations are the means to the end of achieving that goal. So security controls are not the goal. Effective cyber risk management is. And we at the Open Group, our security forum, we have the mission of connecting architecture and design with risk and risk management. And it comes down to this fundamental precept. Measure what matters. Risk is the measurement of security. Security is higher when risk is lower. And we can measure it. That's what the Open Group Security Forum is all about. And this is our vision for it. If our goal is effective cyber risk management, we have a management stack that you see on the left whose goal is to effectively govern and manage. To do that, we have to be able to make well-informed decisions to effectively compare alternatives. To do that, we have to support those comparisons with meaningful measurements and accurate models. That is the management mission, the board of directors and the C-suite is to effectively govern and manage risk within their operations. At the same time, and you see that on the right side of the language uh, mission bridge, is that management, even in chaotic times, is moving towards a continuous, a continuous improvement model where they need the right measurements so that they can see what works they can adjust and they can take corrective action when they're not achieving their objectives. So to do that, we have to support a plan, do, study, or plan, do, check, act kind of continuous improvement cycle made famous by Schuhart and Deming. What we have at the Open Group is a risk taxonomy articulated in the tree under the bridge that is the way that we that defines the language that we can use to communicate about risk and then translate that use that to guide the functional security operations that are control based and have and technology based that use something like the NIST CSF as a framework for thinking about technology and architecture through things like identify, protect, <clears throat> detect, respond, and recover. And to do that, we have to have the concept of what does it mean to have, what does it mean? What are we trying to worry about? We're trying to worry about losses. <clears throat> How do we talk about that? And then how do we correct that? How do we <clears throat> control for that? And we, that's what the open group does. We bring risk management and we bring technology and architecture together to holistically discuss what, it, what matters most, the measure of security that is your organizational, your risk associated with IT assets. So what do we do? What are our resources and activities? <clears throat> we have the open fair body of knowledge that consists of two standards, ORA and ORT. We have a risk analysis spreadsheet tool that helps, uh, that's a good tool, it's been used in the field to identify, uh, to decompose and uh, measure single risk issues in a way that brings new practitioners up to speed very quickly and uh, can help people learn about quantitative risk analysis. 
We have a process guide, again, aimed at the new practitioner to help make that first risk analysis successful. And we have a certification regime, at, which has already certified 775 uh, risk analysts. So we have a vibrant community within the open group to measure, quantify cyber risk, bring, help educate, help train, bring people up to speed with tools and support, and then help signal to the world a skill level through the foundation certification program. We also have a vibrant architecture practice. One of the uh, more recent publications from that was the Axioms for the Practice of Security Architecture that gives a basic structure for how to think about security architecture. And then we have some relatively new uh, activities in flight are all around zero trust. So that as we, as we don't rely upon the, the provenance of devices, uh, whether you, uh, your presence on a network or the network. How do we guarantee some sense or how do we think about security in that sense uh, where we have to test for and, and uh, validate security on a near uh, every data transactional level? And then to Oh, and this was referenced, uh, but it was in really tiny print on, uh, on Bob's slides. We have the outsourcing network services assessment tool that is used to help vendors, uh, to help you understand and, and evaluate the supply chain of, and risk associated with outsourced network services, uh, outsourced services broadly defined. That, that's not only an open group guide for the documentation and the, and the approach to that, but also a spreadsheet tool and user manual that helps embody and concretely give you tools. So one of the things that you see consistently here is that we go beyond just standards and just saying what, but we have, for the last couple years, really tried to help make it real to people so that we can support the practice, so that we can support the profession in quantitative risk analysis, security architecture, and network assessment. We said, you know, open fair is where risk meets architecture. And we do that through what we call a loss scenario where we have it, we form a sentence, threats, breach or impair assets that cause observable loss events that have direct consequences and may have reactions from others. And from that, we can develop the concept of what happens before the loss, like a contact event, a threat event, that becomes a loss event and the controls in place that can mitigate a contact event from becoming a threat event or a threat event from becoming a loss event. And then we can argue and, and support how those controls map into a control framework that the security operations people already have some familiarity with so that we can map the, what management cares about where risk meets architecture to the architecture and the operations. And similarly, once a loss occurs, how do we mitigate it once it's begun? So we have to detect it, respond, and recover. And again, through forms of loss and through those functional categories of, of um, operational activities, we can help people see the complete picture for how they can achieve management objectives through security controls. The axioms for the practice of security architecture gives you a frame for thinking about how you build an architecture for controls. 
And you'll notice at the top of that, at the basis of it, is that it's a risk-driven architecture that has applicability through a context, scope, intelligence, and how to build trust and how you think about trust between uh, within the architecture, then gives a structure, an interface. The interface is a is where the human design comes in for clarity of communication. Is it usable and is it designed well? And then it gets into detail, much of which we have uh, already seen a lot of in the security practice, like defense in depth, least privilege, access management, secure communications, uh, with a few other things added like precedence and design sovereignty. And you'll see at the link here where you could get that today. The guidance to tools to assess outsourced network services is a very recent publication that worked on and really led by the Department of Defense. Uh, but the open group uh, contributed to that and has published on its website uh, the, the overall approach to this, and also then how uh, the tool uh, is not, the tool is not hosted on the Open Group website, but it is hosted as you see here, and we recommend that you uh, be able to pick this up. This will help people uh, address the outsourcing of network services and can meet the needs of multiple sizes and types of businesses. So it, it's, it's designed to be flexible and scalable and publicly accessible. So what are we doing now? Well, we've spent about the last two years revising the open fair standards and some of the approach that you'll see uh, in those upcoming standards, uh, you've gotten a preview to today. We've done a lot of work to try to make the standard uh, more accessible and uh, more clear so that, and that we can connect and help people grasp more quickly what open fair is about so it's more tangible and more operational, more actionable. And the other activities we are focusing on are in the zero trust uh, area where we're collaborating with the Open Group's Architecture Forum and the SABSA Institute. From this, I just ask our audience members, if you're interested in this, come join us. We're, we have recently attracted several new members who are in the, in the um, both the architecture practice and in the cyber risk, quantitative cyber risk practice. And so we want to continue bringing these people together so that we can cre continue developing this vision of connecting the board and senior management to security operations in the right meaningful way. And with that, let's take a couple questions. Mike, thank you very much. Thank you very much for uh, for sharing what's going on. It's a great summary. There's a there's a lot of work, but you've uh, <laughs> stuck to time and managed to uh, just just hit the high points there. I mean, I know you and I have discussed this before, but but I'm not a security professional. <laughs> but it was nice to hear Bob say that he trusted me. So that was that <laughs> good to know. But I, I'm not a security professional, but I uh, hand on heart can say that the the open fair standards, the body of knowledge there, are very easy for uh, to pick up and understand uh, for somebody who doesn't have um, years of training in this. It really is a very approachable um, body of work, and uh, I'm sure there are there are quite a few of you on the uh, uh, attending today who who may not uh, have the uh, extensive experience that some of the speakers have in this area, but but I assure you it's very easy to pick up and I, I encourage you to do it. It's um, it's great. And of course, you've been teaching it to economic students, Mike. So um, I have <laughs> and they get it. So um, 
So a um, couple of questions. Um, you talked about collaborating with the Architecture Forum and the, and the SAPS uh, Institute. Uh, is there an Archimate security architecture model or maybe a work to achieve one? Oh, <clears throat> so I'll say not to my knowledge, but, but as, as you kind of opened me up, <laughs> I, I'm much more specialized in the uh, cyber risk and quantitative measurement areas. And so I'm less connected. So I think it'd be a good thing to just, to let's take that offline and get back yeah. to the, uh, ask her about that because I honestly don't know. Yeah, yeah, no, that's, that's I'm not aware of one either, but we can, uh, we can try and uh, address that separately. Um, can you please touch upon the certifications for Open Fair, Mike? Sure, oh, and if there's any further elaboration on that question, but, the Open Fair certification program has been around since 2013. It, we have, like I said, about 750 uh, people already certified in it around the world. It, it's a 80 question exam based upon the two standards. Uh, and if you, but I will say, as I've worked with people and ranging from undergraduate economic students to practitioners, it's a little hard to study for and get all the details in mm -hmm. place to complete the certification exam. But, uh, but I've seen it done for self-study. I've certified undergraduate students in it, uh, about 30 of them over the years. And uh, so it's quite, uh, quite doable. And it's a um, like 80 questions, multiple choice uh, and it's quite achievable, and we have an open group study guide to help support the self-study uh, student. So I, I feel like with that, the process guide, the risk analysis tool, we're in, for someone who wants to come up to speed on FAIR, there are tools and resources out there from the open group that can make that happen. Absolutely, yeah, and we'll, we'll hear a little more about those later in the later in the day, of course. And there's a, a question just come in. It's, uh, I guess, a, uh, somewhere between a comment and a question. It's a bit different from TOGAF then, um, which clearly it is. Um, uh, yes, yes. <laughs> I, I actually have taken um, TOGAF certified. So <laughs> yeah, I will say it, it is different. Uh, maybe because I know FAIR so well. I, I think the FAIR certification approach is conceptually simpler mm -hmm. uh, and it and it's it the more the foundational level than TOGAF is yeah yeah okay Mike um, we are going to leave it there um, but thank you once again for uh, thank you a great summary of uh, of what's going on in the forum and uh, I'll repeat uh, repeat your uh, your plea. Um, anyone interested in these things, please come and get involved. It's a, it's a great community and there's uh, lots to be done. So uh, meanwhile, Mike Jervik, warm round of applause from the Open Group. Thank you.